Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, last session of the uh, Automation Awareness Month. Uh, so today we're going to cover the uh, uh, SAS workshop. Uh, it will be primarily uh, demos. Uh, we'll go over like the different options uh, that you can consume SAS uh, the CLI, Ansible, uh, collection and the SDK. Uh, we on the uh, screen uh, attachments page, uh, like a panel, you can find the main links. So most of our, I mean, basically all, all those the demos we are going through today, you can run. Uh, of course, you can run your in your own. We have it on the uh, this GitHub link at the beginning of the, uh, I mean, the first link we, you find in the attachments uh, panel. Uh, and uh, that's basically what we're going to follow today. Uh, it has uh, all the dependencies and the uh, and, uh, readme on, on how to uh, install everything. Okay. So uh, let's get started. Um, so the plan today is we'll cover, uh, we spend a few minutes covering the SAS CLI, uh, and then we'll have, uh, uh, we'll cover the Ansible collection, see how, uh, what things it can add on top of what you get from the CLI. And finally, we'll cover the uh, uh, SDK. Uh, again, uh, what it can, what, what it, uh, provides in addition to what you would get from CLI and our uh, Ansible collection. And finally, we'll go uh, with some references uh, at the end. Okay. So uh, let's start. Uh, I will share my terminal. Okay. So, uh, so this is basically, uh, I mean, the, the structure of the repository that I was referring to. I mean, you can find that link in the attachments panel. Uh, and we basically have uh, a, a global uh, or a main readme file where it goes over the step by step on how to install all dependencies and so on. And then uh, the some commands that you can execute on, on uh, with each of the uh, uh, section that we're covering today. Uh, we'll start with the CLI, right? So for the CLI, uh, I mean, uh, we cover that on Tuesday. Uh, I mean, the we have SAS and SAS Pro. Uh, for the CLI examples here, we are using SAS Pro, uh, which we are uh, also including uh, in, inside this distribution uh, directory. Uh, and so that is the SAS Pro version. Uh, if you go to the normal uh, public GitHub uh, link for uh, for the SAS tool, uh, that's the SAS standard that you, you find, right? Uh, we also included in the Ansible component, we included uh, a Galaxy uh, collection uh, already built uh, in the in the readme file, it has the instructions on how you install that uh, collection into your uh, environment as well. Okay, uh, so we, we basically we'll run uh, today, assuming that you went through uh, those installation phase uh, in, uh, steps, and those steps are covered in the readme at the beginning of the readme file. Uh, 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 it, it goes over those steps. Okay. Uh, in order to have like a target for you to, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, send those requests to, uh, I mean, the easiest way is to reserve a uh, DevNet sandbox. Uh, so there is information here on, on like a link to DevNet uh, sandbox page where you can reserve your own sandbox and and play with it uh, throughout the exercises. Okay. Uh, so. Once you have everything installed, right, uh, you would uh, then, so in this directory here, uh, that's where I have the, uh, 
uh, that uh, the main the, the clone from the, the repository that we are sharing, right? So you, you would start by uh, activating the virtual environment. Uh, so that would uh, basically load the, the Python environment uh, that you have installed. And that includes uh, all the dependencies uh, in it. Uh, but in terms of packages, that means it's basically including the uh, Ansible uh, core, right? Uh, and all the dependencies, it includes Sastry, which is the Cisco SDN package, and all the dependencies, and also includes uh, Jupyter uh, Lab. Uh, or notebook uh, and all its dependencies as well. So these are the main packages being used uh, during the uh, session today. Okay. Uh, so let's go to the so let's cover the CLI, right? Uh, so uh, so what we're going to do is in order to make it easier uh, for us to enter the commands and not like provide like uh, uh, credentials every time, we have this. Uh, DevNet sandbox uh, file that we're going to source. So it provides the, the credential information, uh, basically, and then I, we don't need to enter every time, right? So source. Okay. And so uh, if you type SD, so when you have SAS3 installed, I mean, SAS3 becomes available via that SDN command. Uh, so if you type SDN version, it will show you the uh, what version you're running. So in this case, you can see it's running Sastry Pro. Uh, if you had Sastry Standard, uh, you'll see just Sastry, okay? Uh, and as we covered on uh, Tuesday, uh, we, in type help, you can see the overall structure. So of the uh, SD-WAN commands, uh, and you basically have some global variables like uh, the uh, uh, credentials and the menu information uh, where you can either provide in the CLI, you can load uh, using environment variables as we just did, uh, or you can uh, uh, have the user uh, be prompted to enter those uh, credentials or information, okay? Uh, and, and then you'd have uh, a in our case, because we loaded everything using uh, environment variables, we don't need to provide any of those. Uh, and then next is the uh, like the, the test, right? So the, the backup test, for example. For example. Uh, and then there is the uh, and use help to find out the, the backup task options, right? And and that this so you can basically navigate over the CLI options that way. Okay, so. Uh, the one of the first uh, so if you just run like a SDN verbose so verbose means it is uh, like going to show display the uh, informational level and uh, above uh, log messages into your terminal so it's a good way to if you like to follow what it's doing and it's especially good for uh, like a long running task such as the backup Task. So I just am running a backup. So it's basically uh, downloading uh, all the uh, 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 device templates, feature templates, uh, and uh, attachment variables, policies. Basically, all the configuration on the manage it downloads and saves to a local. Uh, in this case, it's saving to a, a directory structure. Uh, you can also uh, have options to save into a zip uh, package as well. So just to showcase this uh, setup. Uh, so in addition to backup, we have uh, options to restore, right? And so we can uh, restore that into the same vManage or another vManage. And as you restore, there are options to uh, like, uh, uh, I mean, identify if there are di uh, differences between like two different templates with the same name and then uh, update uh, whatever is on the manage with your uh, local copy and so on. I'm not going into all those options uh, for interest of time, uh, but just wanted to highlight that. What we're going to do now is we are going to go over uh, a kind of like a storyline where we are 
uh, showing using uh, a couple of show commands, uh, specifically a show real-time control connections and a show real-time app route stats. And uh, we'll see uh, the functionality that you get out of the box with uh, Sastra uh, CLI. And then as we transition to the Ansible collection, you see what uh, more you can get. And then as we transition to the SDK, you see how much more flexibility you can get, right? So that's kind of like the the flow we'd like to go over uh, today. Okay, so uh, let's start with the control connection. So uh, so there is this uh, show task, right? And then uh, uh, the show task again, we can always uh, type help, uh, and then it shows shows the options you have. Uh, I will start with show devices. Uh, and that's basically uh, basically going to list the inventory of devices, right, uh, from the manage, right? Uh, and all the, the show tasks, like the show device, for example, if you type minus help, uh, there is a number of uh, options for you to select what you'd like to display, right? So like if you just type show devices, uh, it will list all the devices, but you can select uh, you can use regular expressions uh, and inverted regular expressions to uh, match on like the device name, uh, type, or model fields. You can uh, uh, filter by site ID, by whether the device is reachable or not, by system IP. So there's a lot of uh, uh, selection criteria that you can provide. And, and those options are come across all the show tasks. Uh, similarly, uh, all tasks in Sastra that can provide a table as output, you have the option to save that table as a, a, a one or more CSV files, or save that table as a JSON formatted uh, file, right? Uh, so again, this is common across all tasks, okay? So uh, we are going to run the uh, show control Connections. Okay. So, uh, and then that's like a real time, right? So, real time means uh, so it is going to use the real time APIs from the manage, which means like you send a request to the manage, the manage send a request to the device, waits for the reply, and then uh, provides you with the answer. Uh, and then as it uh, and then it, it's good because it's the most up-to-date option. Like you get the fresh uh, data, right? But at the same time, it doesn't scale or, or it takes longer because if, if you direct this to a number of devices, it would take some time. And so we, uh, uh, by default, like in the real time, if you just run this way, it will run across all the devices in the inventory, which is basically the device that we, we saw previously with the show devices command. If you'd like to get from, and then we can just run it, for example, and then it will uh, execute that, right? Uh, in our case, I mean, it, was, it won't take too long because it, it is, we only have seven devices, right? And uh, the real time we have, uh, like, a, it is like multi-threaded. And so we have a thread pool of uh, 10, 10 devices at a time. So we send like uh, 10 requests simultaneously and uh, wait for the, the reply and then, uh, in, in, so it, it's not uh, as uh, slow as, as like uh, one at a time, right? Uh, but let's filter and uh, let's focus on uh, a particular device. So we can use the, the system IP option and we'd like to uh, specifically get from the site one, C edge one. So there are a number of ways we can select this one. Uh, I will select using the system IP just so we can keep consistency with the, like uh, uh, as we go with the uh, Ansible in SDK, the system IP is the easiest variable to get to. And so uh, I'm just using that. So system IP will be this 10, 10, 1, 13, right? And so if I run it, it will basically extract the uh, uh, the control uh, connections, right? Uh, for uh, for each of those show tests, we basically have three views. Uh, we have the default table, uh, which provides, I guess, the most useful information or the information that you 
one would most likely to look for. Uh, there is a detail, which basically adds more columns, so it provides more information uh, in the output. And there, uh, in this case, it basically contains like uh, the uh, uh, instance ID, uh, the the uh, public ports, and, and so on, right? Uh, and uh, and and finally, there is a simple view, which is uh, like a, uh, the very minimal. Uh, and, and then depending on the, uh, I mean, we evaluate I mean, what you put on each one uh, for uh, depending on, on the command, right? So, but we usually uh, spend, uh, I mean, we, we, we spend a lot of time like trying to be conscious about what we display and, and uh, not basically have like an extensive amount of information displayed. Uh, okay. So uh, in this case, as you can see, I mean, for one run the show control connections, uh, uh, the person can basically check whether the uh, control connections are up, right? Uh, the state is up. Uh, that is basically like one of the main use cases for this command. Uh, and then uh, right now, I mean, we basically need uh, us to evaluate, okay, is the, uh, are the control connections up for all the, the entries and so on. Uh, and we'll see that with Ansible, we now is they we, we now uh, is, are capable of uh, uh, evaluating right i mean making sure that uh, uh, programmatically uh, assert having assert that I mean, the, the the state is up for all the connections okay uh, another command that we would like to we'll show is the uh, app route stats And then uh, we, we are going to use the same system IP. And, uh, and, and so it's basically uh, collecting the app route stats that contains uh, the uh, 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 basically like information about like uh, latency jitter, packet loss, uh, for all the uh, the tunnels, right? Uh, for each, all the tunnels like that uh, are uh, starting from this router, right? So we are looking at uh, this uh, site one and the edge one, and then there are the tunnels to this uh, remote IP, like 10, 10, uh, 111, and the tunnels to like 115 and so on, right? So the, uh, it's basically showing up the stats. Okay, uh, one thing uh, to note is that like the output from uh, stats, basically, I mean, mimicking, I mean, exactly what the manage provides. And it basically contains like a six buckets. Uh, so that's basically those indexes. And the bucket zero is basically the, the, the uh, latest, uh, uh, contains the latest samples. Uh, and then bucket one, two, and so on contains the, the oldest samples, right? Uh, and so we'll, we'll need to remember that when we use Ansible because uh, so like for example on, with Ansible we will now be able to uh, evaluate whether uh, for example the latency is above a certain value right uh, and uh, when we do that we normally are interested in the uh, latest uh, sample uh, in, in this case will be uh, the index zero we'll come back to this uh, in the uh, Ansible section so similarly to uh, the uh, previous command, we can also provide uh, the detail. And again, it will provide more information, right? Uh, as you can see, there are, uh, 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 we have a predefined uh, set of uh, columns that, that we chose to display uh, for each of those commands, right? Uh, and uh, and that is a, I guess, limitation uh, uh, that we, we, I mean, as we, uh, was compromised in order to not have too much data displayed to the user. And you will see that as we go to the SDK, uh, then you are able to, I mean, uh, display or, or capture whatever information is provided by the manage. Because like for, for each of those commands, there are, there is much more uh, in the uh, return payload that the manage provide 
than the, the specific columns that we display, even in the uh, detail option. And so if for some reason you, you need that information, uh, uh, then uh, you can use uh, like the SDK to customize how uh, a task or, or, or how these uh, API calls uh, are executed. Okay. All right, so uh, that is, uh, I guess, what I, I wanted to show regarding the CLI, the size for CLI. Okay. Uh, let me see if there is any questions. Okay, I don't think there is any. Okay. Uh, so, so next we'll cover the uh, size tree Ansible. Okay. So, uh, if you look at the repository, so we, we just covered what is inside the CLI directory. We are now going to the Ansible directory, right? Uh, and we, we basically have a playbook that we created uh, to showcase here, right? So the uh, Let's go over that playbook. So uh, what we're going to show here, so th these are basically a regular Ansible playbook where we can now, uh, once you have the, uh, the Sistec collection installed, you can utilize the different uh, modules and plugins available in that collection. Uh, and uh, as we covered on Tuesday, uh, there is a, a module for each uh, and every task available in, in SciStream, okay? Uh, and so we will, so in this case here, we would like to mimic what we just did in the CLI, right? So you like to collect the show real time task, uh, specifically the control connections, right? So that is the uh, format that we, we can use for that task call. So we use the Cisco size tree domain, right? Dot show real time. We provide the credentials here, uh, like in the address, right? Uh, in this case, those are Ansible variables that we are uh, loading from the inventory. So if you look at the inventory, uh, we basically only have uh, like one vManage uh, and the uh, information about that vManage. Uh, so those we can uh, load into here, okay? Uh, and, and then uh, command and system IP. So those are basically like uh, uh, mimicking the uh, the uh, uh, options one would see when you, you cover uh, show real time control connections. So uh, basically, like we have the same uh, the same options that you see in the CLI. You also see you you also have them available under that specific module. Okay. Uh, in the uh, uh, link uh, for the uh, Sastre Ansible repository, that is also in the attachments panel. Uh, we have a, a fairly good, uh, I believe, like read me there with information about all the tasks, all the options available for each task. Okay. Uh, so what we're doing here is uh, we are basically running that show real time control connections, right? Uh, with exact same option that we did in the CLI. Uh, and then what, uh, we are saving that output in uh, in the show real time result, right? And uh, one of the things we, we discussed on Tuesday was that I mean, uh, what I mean, there's a lot of things that become available uh, through the this uh, uh, result variable from the uh, size transport tasks. Uh, we not only have the actual uh, task output, like the table, uh, which we can get, like in this case, we have this debug here. That's basically uh, looking at standout lines uh, uh, in that output that basically shows I me mean, what one would see in the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, CLI, right? Uh, and then uh, in here, when we provide the, the debug tag, uh, it will display basically the full contents, we will see this working later, uh, the full contents of the uh, uh, result variable. Uh, and then here is, I guess, where the, the interesting part happens. So like, so now that we have saved uh, the output from that task, right, as a, uh, like a structured data, uh, it, it becomes easy to uh, implement like, a, or to parse that or evaluate the, that output, 
right? Uh, in this case, uh, we'll see the details about that, but it's basically a, a, a dictionary, a, a list of dictionaries uh, where uh, each uh, entry in that list corresponds to one row from the uh, uh, table in the CLI output. And uh, uh, each uh, in, in the dictionary basically represents the, the, the columns, right? So there's the values for the different columns for that particular uh, row. Uh, in particular, the column six contains uh, that information whether uh, the output is, I mean, the, the control connection is up or down. Uh, so basically contains this uh, state uh, column. And, uh, and then uh, we're going to evaluate whether that state column is up. Right, uh, and then uh, uh, and, and the, the other thing is instead of evaluating for all uh, buckets, uh, remember we men mentioned about that index column, that index column we are only uh, going to evaluate for the latest bucket or the uh, bucket number uh, uh, zero, right? And then uh, we, so for, so we are looping over, uh, over table zero right and then uh, we are evaluating whether the uh, column uh, six or the state is up right uh, and so the uh, that will basically check whether uh, all connections in the latest sample are up uh, and uh, if it fails you provide like a neural message right okay uh, that's the, that's the first check. The other check is we are going to run the uh, show uh, up route stats with the same parameter that we saw in the CLI. And uh, we are going to uh, basically go through the similar steps. But now the evaluation is, okay, let's, uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, the latency is less than 130 milliseconds, uh, just as an example, right? And so we can, uh, encode that uh, uh, assertion like this. So basically, we uh, mean the, the column seven is uh, returned as a okay, string, uh, and then we convert to an integer, and then we check it whether it's less than or equal to 130. Okay. And uh, if it is less, it is higher than 130, then uh, it will provide like a, a fail message, right? So that is like a one good use case, like maybe you'd like to run uh, like a sweep of uh, commands and evaluate the output. I mean, you can do that uh, with uh, Ansible, right? Uh, the other use case uh, or more obvious use case for using Ansible uh, as opposed to the CLI is if you'd like to have a workflow, right, uh, of uh, multiple tasks that you'd like to run in sequence. Uh, we mentioned like uh, during the uh, uh, the webinar on Tuesday, like you can run like a backup and then restore to another location. And, and uh, basically like uh, we can uh, combine uh, multiple tasks in, in a single playbook, right? Uh, okay, so uh, we, let's run this. So um, I'll just change to the Ansible. We're now in that uh, like a playbook directory, so we run Ansible. Um, uh, uh, so we basically run over those uh, tasks, right? Uh, so first, it's retrieving the uh, control connections. Uh, so the, he's basically showing the same output. And now it is evaluating the whether uh, all the connections are up. So uh, for each entry there, so uh, all these are up. Now it basically retrieves the uh, real time command and is evaluating all the output, make sure that mean every all output is uh, under 130 uh, uh, milliseconds, right? So like in this run, uh, it, it basically uh, pass or all tests passed. So what we can do is just uh, to see like some error uh, happening 
you can see that there are some cases where we have like a latency going to mean around like 90 uh, milliseconds, right? So what we can do is we can uh, maybe just change the uh, the playbook. And instead of uh, 130, maybe let's evaluate to 90. Uh, just, uh, let's just see some uh, errors. And uh, I will also run it with the uh, debug option uh, because with the debug, it will uh, basically dump the uh, the output, uh, the the the, uh, uh, the full contents of that uh, return uh, variable. So let's run the same, and then uh, pass the debug tag. So we basically run the same tasks, but now because it it has the debug uh, tag. It will also execute the uh, uh, the debug statement. So, like this one is one of the debugs, right? So, so in here, I just want to show, like, so this is the full uh, contents of that uh, uh, return variable, right? So, uh, we have the std outline. So, this is what we displayed uh, before, and then inside the tables, uh, it basically contained the tables that we are. With it's a representation of the tables, right? Uh, so uh, again, like each entry here is basically uh, in this list is a uh, row, and then each entry in the dictionary uh, is basically a column of that uh, row, right? The, and then uh, there is a header uh, field where you have the uh, the titles for or the header information for each row, uh, and then you can also match. With to understand, like, okay, uh, uh, column zero is like the device, and you know, which, what each column means, right? So you can you can use that as a reference to that as well. And then in the trace, it basically contains uh, uh, like the uh, the log message that you would normally get from a CLI in uh, like a minus variables uh, option. Okay. Uh, so it. it ran the assertion on the con uh, control connections. I mean, we didn't change there, so everything is still up. Now with the real time, uh, you'll see it's just a dump. So this is a big dump. We're not going to go over that. Uh, I just want to see the result at the end. Yeah. So you can see now that, uh, I mean, it uh, evaluated. Okay, there were a couple of uh, Tunnels that had uh, the uh, uh, latency greater than 90 uh, milliseconds. And so uh, I mean, we can uh, uh, see that I mean, it is uh, properly capturing that uh, information and uh, alerting whenever there is uh, the assertion doesn't pass, right? OK, so. Uh, that's basically what we wanted to sh cover as for the Ansible uh, collections. Uh, so now let me hand over to, uh, let me see if there is any uh, yeah, questions couple, here. Yeah. We've got a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so our first question, Marcelo, is from uh, John Ivanez from Telmex. He asks, hello, where can I download a copy uh, of Software Pro? And um, so that'll actually be available in this repository that we've shared uh, underneath the CLI directory. Mm -hmm. um, so in there, and the instructions in the readme file on how to install that uh, are, are in there as well, John? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, thanks. So uh, we basically, uh, in this repository that we are sharing, like it, which is in the attachments, the link is in the attachments page. Uh, there is, uh, we included this uh, version, uh, like the, uh, the latest version of Sasuke Pro. So what is in there is Sasuke Pro. And then uh, in the readme file, it, it explains how you can install it uh, in there, right? Uh, having said that, for I me, mean, we are providing in this repository as like a, a one, basically one version, particular version, right? But for future versions, in order for you to get, uh, I mean, if you have any uh, any uh, 
subscription with Cisco, if you have any service subscription and so on, uh, you can contact your uh, your Cisco uh, like representative and then uh, they will add you to a distribution list where we uh, post uh, newer versions. So every time we post a newer version, we drop in to all that all the users in the distribution list. Uh, so basically, you get can get the latest version that we have now in the report that uh, uh, we are sharing today. Uh, future versions, uh, if you get, if you like to get uh, to be on the distribution list, I'm sure. Telmax uh, is eligible to it, and so you guys you can contact your, uh, I mean your your CISO contact you have there, and then uh, they they will uh, include you in the uh, distribution list, okay? So that you get uh, the future updates. Uh, yeah, there's another uh, question from uh, Make, uh, and uh, so about using uh, PyTS, so. Uh, Using PyTS together with uh, SAS tree, uh, sure. I, I mean, we we can create this integration in many ways, right? Uh, uh, so one way is uh, we can. Uh, I mean, we'll see. Like Eric will cover like the SDK component, right? Where we will see that you can run like within like a Python code, you can call. Uh, the SAS tree tasks. I mean, the same test we cover now, you can call from any Python script. So in your uh, PyTS uh, 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 test case, you can include uh, a, 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 this uh, SAS tree SDK call that will uh, uh, basically execute the SAS tree task, and then you can uh, interpret the, the output uh, as like a native Python uh, objects. Uh, uh, so basically, like uh, my point is, this can easily be done uh, by leveraging the SDK and calling tasks. And, uh, and uh, Eric is going to cover that. Uh, and in fact, if you look at our Ansible, such Ansible uh, collection, like the source code, is exactly what we did there. So basically, the the Ansible collections are not are primarily like a shim that basically. Uh, uh, contains the like the Python code to call uh, the uh, SDK tasks uh, and, and basically run the same task uh, within Python. Right. I hope that uh, helps with the question. Cool. Uh, so, with further ado, I guess uh, uh, transition over to uh, Eric for the SDK. All right. Thank you, Marcelo. So. Um, I'm going to start off with, so Marcelo shared with us using Sostre natively in its CLI form, and then also being able to use Sostre uh, as an Ansible module so that you could develop playbooks. I'm going to go over using Sostre libraries as uh, a software development kit, and I'm very much a student of this still. And so what I'm showing on my screen right now is actually where I went to start. Um, this is the uh, documentation on developer.cisco.com slash doc slash SDWAN. I'm here in the SDK section underneath the Sostre SDK underneath Quick Start. And I literally started here when I started using this as an SDK. Um, everything is in here, great explanation. So we're just going to go ahead and go through these just in the same fashion that I did. I'm using the DevNet sandbox that Marcelo mentioned earlier. I have my own reservation. Um, this is the re reserved sandbox on DevNet. Um, it is based off of SD-WAN 20.10. And this is my architecture at the moment, just so if you have any questions about what it looks like. And then this is the repository that Marcelo has been going over as well. And then within, and this is going to, it should be shared uh, in the, uh, the panel. You should be able to get to that link as it's public. And then within the SDK, we have a single Jupyter notebook and that's where we're gonna start. So I'm gonna use VS code here in my terminal. I'm already, I have my uh, uh, Python virtual environment already running. And I'm already in the SDK directory where the Sostre-SDK notebook exists. And I'm just going to start my Jupyter notebook. 
All right, so that opens up a web page for me. And then here is my notebook. And then here is everything that we have built there. So now when you download from this repository, you'll get this entire notebook in here. And I've tried to do is organize this around the way that I first started using it. And then, you know, a lot with Marcelo's help because he's definitely my, my mentor here. Um, and, and then also I ask lots of silly questions and I do things the wrong way and Marcella would point out to me the right way to do things. So I, I include those things in this notebook just to help me. And I want to just convey those same types of things to the audience here and help maybe overcome some of the learning curves that I went through. So um, at the beginning here, we start off with using that REST object that we talked about earlier and um, on Tuesday. And, how significant that is. So you don't have to deal with any of the low level understandings of the REST API. Um, you're able just to simply pull the REST object in from the Cisco SD-WAN based REST API, um, and then just pass it a couple API parameters. Um, and then in this case here, we're just gonna go ahead and, and pull just the version of the, the vManager we connected to. So I, I already have a VPN connection to my DevNet sandbox. And the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and get some parameters passed in. So this is going to be my base URL, my username and password. Now I can pass lots of parameters in here. I have several notebooks where I pass in device IDs and, and numerous, numerous pieces of information into it, similar to creating an environment in Postman. I'm just going to go ahead and run this. And nothing occurs here because all we're doing is just setting values. And the first thing I'm going to do now is let's just call uh, this REST API and just get that software version from our vManage. So when you see that asterisk in there, it means that it's running. And this tells us that we logged in successfully and we were able to retrieve that uh, vManage version. So that right there validates we, we've connected, we've logged in. And remember too, with the rest, um, when we're using this with uh, object, we log in and then as soon as it exits the width, it also logs out, which is key. Um, because if you're doing this manually or if you're trying to develop this with like in, in Postman, you'll have to remember to log out. And that's already incorporated into this. But we can go ahead and continue expanding it. We're going to build on that same device control connections using that same device ID that Marcelo was using. And one thing to call out is that Marcelo was referring to that device ID as system IP, dash dash system IP in the CLI. And you'll see here that we're actually going to pass it as device ID. That's the same thing, okay? And then what we're going to do here is we're going to also import JSON so we can take the, the information that's given to us and dump that in native JSON and then just print that out. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so it's not as pretty as what you were able to get when you're using the CLI. Uh, we get the header information, details about the columns, all the different uh, 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 header information for the different uh, fields, the field information properties. Um, it's still not the data we're looking for. And uh, we get down further and we'll finally get to the data down here. Okay, so it's not very usable if you're just trying to look at it, but it's very usable from a programmatic standpoint. But one thing is that it, if I use this the way that I did this, I just use a pure, just a standard get. And in this case here, I had to use the, know the entire URI, which means that I also have to be familiar with all the URIs are or dig through the Sostre code in order to understand that. But Sostre is abstracted into three different levels, the REST object, the vManage models, and then also the Sostre tasks. So what vManage models does is it takes this URI and, and all these other dependencies around like, how can I format this better? Um, how can I truncate the data more efficiently? Um, and it gives me the capability just to call the model instead of having to remember the whole URI. But for me, I was always wondering, you know, how do I know what models do I even have available to me? For example, you see device control connections as an example of one of the models, but how do I know what those all are? Um, so what I was doing initially is I was digging through the code and becoming familiar with the SD-WAN base and the, mod and the models vManage uh, Python code and trying to learn all those. But you can simply just use the dir command by importing this, and we can get a list of all the models that are actually available. Okay. So 
what we were looking for before, and, you, and I'm just going to scroll slowly so you can see an example of all the models that are already created. And you can see they use a, a, a type of camel case for their definition. There's a couple caveats to that. But in general, uh, you'll, it's the fairly readable, understandable about what you're looking at. And we, what we were looking at before was that uh, device control connection. So we scroll down and we see device control connections. So now instead of using this URI that we were using before with an API get, we're going to be able to use the device control connection instead in the vManage model. But every one of these has different ways of using it. Now on the CLI, you're able to type in dash dash help for anything that you attempt to do and you get that detail. We can do that in the SDK as well by using the help function. And we can just wrap that around the actual vManage model. So let's see what that looks like. Oh, and of course we get in there. And where is it? My typo, device control connections. I'm sorry, here we go. So Eric, in each import, <laughs> uh, so if you do a sequest UN dot models we manage, and then in, like add there, yeah, enter. No, sorry. No, or, so models we manage on the left, like base dot models we manage and then import device control connections. So first uh, line, uh, uh, from S6 to N uh, base, and then dot models we manage. Where are you talking about? Sorry, this was yeah, working. This one. <laughs> yeah, so basically like, a, like that from, right? From Cisco SDN dot base mm -hmm. dot models we manage. And then on the right, uh, import device control connections. There we go. OK. Yeah. And like I said, I'm still a student, and Marcel is absolutely my mentor here. So this is just learning curve. All right, so here we see the help. And now you get lots of details around how uh, and what information you need. So you get the method resolution order if you want to understand how things are, are going through. You also get details about the uh, fields extended, the field standard, and the field sub. So if we're, uh, which fields are going to be included, uh, the API path. Um, we get a piece here where we see our API params. And this is where I was talking about we're using device ID instead of the system IP. And you also notice that this is coming from SD-WAN based models based real time item. So these are going to be real time pieces that we're going to collect. The items that we're going to focus on here really going forward is the field info and the field value iterate. Um, the field info is going to give us the information. It's a list of all these pieces that we saw up here. Okay. And then the, um, and then what is a common name for them? Okay. So that we can create a good header. And then the field value iterate is going to allow us um, to iterate over rows um, when we get multiple items returned. So let's go ahead and go a little further and look at what is, if we're doing help with field info, it's just going to do this to me also. So this one work fine. Um, when we do help on field info, we get additional information uh, such as uh, what type of pieces are going to be included in that, um, that it's retrieving metadata from one or more fields, um, the information that's included in there, what the defaults are, uh, and so on. So you can continue to expand the help in the same way that you do in the CLI, um, but especially like trying to understand what your options are available to you uh, when you're trying to use this in, as an SDK and, and uh, more programma programmatically. Um, the next piece we're going to do is, is actually print our control connections out. And so we're going to use now that model. So here we've imported the models vManage. Uh, we've imported the rest from the beginning, still using the rest as API. And now we're also importing the device control connection specifically from the models we manage. And we're going to set an object called control connections to just the model name dot get, specifying the API for our connection and then our device ID. So rather than having to know the URI, we just need to know what the model name was. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so here we get cleaner JSON. Notice that we're not getting all of the header information, all the details around 
the schema of the uh, the JSON output. We're just getting literally the data that we're looking for. Okay. You also notice this instance. You know, Marcelo emphasized. You know, the the the, the collection intervals. Okay. All right. Um, so we have all this. This is our field info, but these are not necessarily good to use if we want to create a table or a report. Um, other things that are not very useful to us are things like last updated time or uptime date. These are not really usable fields um, for us. We need to do some manipulation on them to create a, a more readable report. So let's take a look at if we were just to print the control connections field names and get a list of what are all the field names. So we can see them right here. If I don't want to run this and get all the data, I just want a quick snapshot. What do I have available to me to work with? This is the list of all the field names. Now, Marcelo pointed out um, in a couple places where you have a standard output, um, you have a detailed output, and then you also have a simple output. Um, and each one of those are organized in a way so to, to optimize the viewing on a terminal, not to provide too much output or give you the option just to have skinny out, you know, output. But this gives you visibility into what all the fields are available for you to use that are beyond what you see in a normal output. Um, and in this case here, these are our field names, okay? But we would like to get the field info for a couple of them. And in this case, we'll use site ID and uptime date. So the field info is a just a, a more readable format of what these field names are. So in this case, site ID translates uh, its field name from site ID to site under you know, space capital ID. And uptime date uh, converts to up since. These are much prettier to use in a table or a report than these values. So um, now if we want to do is let's take the field info and the and use the field value iterate and create a table. So we're still importing the same REST uh, API and still importing the same device control connections model that we were before. Our uh, with block looks the same. Our control connection object is identical. And what we're doing now is we're creating a header. Um, then we're going to print that header. And then we're going to iterate over each row um, and specify which particular items we want in each uh, column. So in our header object, we use the control connections field info, and we specify that we want to use system IP, local color, remote color, state, and uptime date. Um, then we go ahead and print that in a header. So our first, second, third, fourth, fifth columns, um, the number of uh, spaces that are available for each column, and then uh, and then just import this you know directly in. So our header now will appear at the moment as system IP and so on, but we want to use the field info piece of it. So it's going to translate system IP first to site ID. I'm sorry, it's going to translate system IP, not, or sorry, we'll go example of this one here. Uptime date will get translated to up since in the header. Okay. And then we're going to iterate over each one of the rows in the results and place that information in each column here. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so that's much prettier than this here. Okay, and, and we're using, again, just, we now, why not just use the CLI? Um, well, the CLI just gives you a straightforward, you know, way of using Sostre. This allows you now to use Sostre as a library um, and using the SDK and developing your own types of reports. Um, furthermore, you know, you're able to manipulate data. So let's expand on the functionality that exists here already and start incorporating things that are non-software related, such as uh, date time. Okay, so this up since really is not a very readable uh, value for us. It, it's not helpful for operations to have to translate that into something else. So what we're gonna do is translate this into a standard year, month, date, H, uh, hour, minute, second, and provide the proper time zone as well with it. Um, so here what we've done is in the same things, this building upon it, we've added a new import, the date time, and we're importing date time and time zone. And then we've created a function called date time format, um, which takes the timestamp, 
and uh, and then converts us. So ultimately, what we want to do is get to this date time. We're going to convert it using the timestamp. Uh, specify the time zone as UTC and return it in this date time format: a year, month, day, hour, minute, second, and then our time zone. The rest of it again is the same. Same things we built upon. Uh, same header. The only difference here now is in our row. If you go all the way over to the right, you'll see where uptime date is, we're doing a replace, and we're replacing uptime date with the returned value that comes from the date time format function up here. So let's go ahead and run that again and see what it looks like. All right, so same output that we saw before, except for we now have a readable date, okay? Um, so just an example of manipulating uh, pieces. This kind of feeds into the question, can I integrate things like Pi ATS? Absolutely. Um, I'm working on something right now. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it in, done in time for today um, where I'm uh, using um, Mathplotlib to, um, and a couple other libraries to plot out some graphs. Um, and then generate uh, PowerPoint slides and, and um, Word documents directly. Again, it's using a, this Jupyter Notebook format. All right, so let's move on to tasks now. So all of the tasks that uh, Marcelo shared before uh, in the CLI are, are pretty straightforward. But in order to understand which ones you can actually use and how to use them programmatically, again, same question I asked was like, how do I know what tasks to use. So um, I do, again, use the DIR, import tasks, uh, or import implementation from tasks, um, and then just do a DIR on implementation. And I get a list of all the tasks that are available to me to use programmatically uh, in the SDK, okay? Um, what we're gonna do is look at show real-time args, and you'll see this one right here, show real-time args is one of the tasks. And this is the same thing as saying show real time, okay? And uh, we want to do is again, it's like, how do I know how to use it? I can use the help function again. I can get more detail about what the show real time args in there. I understand by reading this that I need to provide a command. Um, I'll also need to provide an API uh, uh, parameter value for my device. Um, but you can get all the information that you're looking for on how do I use that uh, here, uh, just by following this basic help, okay? You won't get this amount of detail. If you try using help at the CLI level um, for show real time, you won't get this. This is showing you, this is a help function on how to use this information uh, in your development work, okay? All right, so let's go ahead then and, and do the uh, SD-WAN show real time control connections and um, so what we were showing before um, was uh, slightly different. We were versus real time versus static or state information is the each vManage and each device in vManage updates uh, every few minutes um, and gets an update from the devices of what their current state is and stores it. So that's state information. Um, and then in that case, we're asking vManage, what do you currently know? Okay. Um, this is going to force us to go and check it real time, go to the device level and ask the device, have vManage ask the device, what is the state of your control connections? Okay. Now, um, in here, we're going to import logging, which we haven't done before. And we're also importing implementation um, and bringing in task show and then that show real time args that I was just displaying. And in the logging piece, Marcelo showed again on the CLI that you can use the dash dash verbose, and that provides an informational uh, readout of everything as it's progressing. I like to use that when I'm using the CLI um, so that I can see progress and things just don't go into the dark. Um, it's very useful if you're having control connections or if there's any errors you want to catch or what did or didn't happen. I want that here also. So I'm going to bring this in um, using logging basic config and set the level to logging info. Same thing as the dash dash verbose. Okay. And now I'm actually gonna bring my task arguments in together. So my show real time args can require a command, in this case, control and connections. I can do just control or I can do control connections. And then the system IP are part of my show real time args, okay? 
And so I set that to my task guards object. I'm going to go ahead then again use that rest object that we've been using all along um, as API. Um, have task set to task show. Have task output uh, do a task runner on actually the task args and point it towards our API um, for our, our rest piece here. And then when it's done, if there's task output, it's going to go ahead and spit it out. Um, and as it goes, it's going to go ahead and, and show me what's going on in the process. So let's run this one now. So you can see here is uh, the show real time task, be manager URL. That's a good indication that I successfully logged in. I only indicated one system IP. Notice in this case, it's system IP, not device ID. So there's a little bit of flip back and forth depending on what you're using, but you are talking about the same IP address. System IP and device IP are synonymous in the terms of SDN deployment, okay? Um, you, and then also retrieve the control connection for the one device and that it completed successfully. And then finally, I get my output. And this looks just like the CLI output, or if I was using this in the Ansible playbook, uh, looks just the same as well. Okay. Um, now, one of the... the so, Eric, can I uh, just... Yeah, yeah. Add yeah. A couple more things? yeah. So the, uh, just a couple of things I'd like to highlight. One is uh, like the task parameters, right? In this case, the show real time arcs. So those are basically like uh, the same... Uh, uh, attribute, same parameters as you see in the CLI. Uh, and the validation is also the same, and we leverage uh, Pydantic for uh, that validation. So you, in the code, you see there are Pydantic models for each of those uh, uh, task uh, arguments, right? Uh, so the... the uh, yeah, I think the you're actually... Right. Yeah, and you, and you actually mention it too in your uh, in in the help. It'll actually indicate too that it's yeah. val there's a validator, the validator with Pydantic too. Yeah, exactly. So the yeah, I just want to highlight that these uh, validation and, and uh, that's another difference between using the models as opposed to the uh, the the rest because like when we place calls using the rest object. All the parameters that you pass are the actual uh, required parameters by the uh, the managed REST API. So that's why, like, we you need to use like device ID because that's the actual parameter that the manage expects. Uh, in here, uh, we we are free to uh, choose I mean, the parameter that we would like. So basically, we that's why there is a difference because in the REST API, in the REST uh, object, uh, the parameter there I mean, reflects what the manage expects. The parameter in the uh, model and uh, and the tasks are basically the parameters uh, that are used in the CLI. The same like a system IP parameter or a CMD parameter, for example. And and then these in these these particular commands, these are the pieces that you know part of what you're talking about that it, it runs. The Pydantic is validating that you can't just put something arbitrary in here. You will get an error if you put something wrong in place. Correct. Sorry, I was a mute. Yes, and, and same for the system IP or, or any parameter that you provide. I mean, if you uh, like have a typo in the uh, in the parameter name, or or if the value is not uh, uh, passing that validation, you get like a, a validation error from that. Uh, whenever you 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 uh, uh, in that like line that you have the task arcs, right? Yeah, so example, if I, I remove connect the S from the back of connections and then I get an error and it says control connection is not valid and this is uh, identified by Pydantic validator. So that, that's a great point there. So uh, if I just add this back, run it again, and uh, we're straightforward. Now, you notice it takes a little bit longer because, again, it's going out, going to be managed, be managed is asking the device for the information and then returning it back. So it's a, it's a two step to do that. All right. Um, when little history for a sec, because we've got a little time here. So the when um, Saucery was first getting developed, its primary focus was on being able to back up and restore uh, the device templates, feature templates, and the uh, local uh, policies so that you could back it up off of um, 
one vManage and and restore it to another vManage. That was really the what kicked off the whole thing. Um, and that's still really the backup and restore is still really part of the most powerful capabilities that um, Sostray brings to the table. Um, so we're actually going to do is run a backup here. Um, and this is a, a, out of the implementation tasks. And we're going to bring in import task backup and, and backup args. Still keep our logging um, set to info. And in this case, our task args now are backup args. Um, we have saved running. It is true, which means it's going to actually give us the uh, running configuration, the CLI version of the running configuration of all the devices. This is a nice quick way to not only get a JSON object backup of all your templates and policies, but also get a CLI um, backup of all, you know, of all the CLI configurations of the device. Um, no rollover uh, is true. So um, in this case, uh, when you back up and you if you continue to back up the same one over and over and over again, um, it will uh, continue to create an in index, um, you know, one, two, three, four, so that you know how far back. So that is the rollover. Um, and then the working directory, in this case, it's set up to backup test. And, and actually what it's going to do is it's going to, where, wherever your local directory is, and I'm going to run this from this notebook, which is actually running inside my SDK folder. And um, so wherever you run this from, it's going to first start by looking for a directory called data. And if that does not exist, which in my case, it doesn't, it's going to create data. And then underneath that, it's going to create a directory, my working directory, in this case, backup tabs. And within that, we will see our backup. So I'm going to do is run this. And while it's running, I'm going to switch over to um, my VS Code, and we can watch everything starting to populate in there. Okay. Um, let's see, any other? All right, let's just go ahead and run this. We'll start it going. Um, Okay, go. All right, we have it running. And we see now the data directory has just been created. If I go under there, I see backup test. And you'll see certificates, device configs, device templates. There's feature templates. If we open this up, we will see a list of the feature templates as it's backing them all up. Um, if we go back to our uh, here, we will see the log as everything is backing up. And it's a listing, everything as it's backing it up. Okay. So as it's doing this in here, we can also see it happening. And each one of these is the actual JSON object okay, um, that vManage uses to uh, store these templates. So these are our feature templates. Device templates are uh, assimilated together of uh, some information around the type of device, but also the templates. Um, and the types of templates, and that's coming from um, our feature templates. And each feature template has what's called a, a UUID associated with it right here, or a template ID, which we call a UUID. And these are what are actually used to reference everything. So if you're ever working in vManage and you're on a uh, looking at a feature template or device template, if you look in the URL, you will see this UUID show up in the URL as well. So our backup is done. It's, it's relatively quick. Um, the larger the deployment you have, the longer it's going to take to run. Sorry. There. And this attack's completed successfully. And we'll look a little bit more in here. So um, one of the things I mentioned is so we, we do, we get certificate information, but we don't actually get certificates. So this is the certificates in their current state or validity. Um, one of the capabilities we have with uh, SawStray is to change the state of validity from valid to invalid or staging um, on a device certificate or bulk of device certificates. Um, we cannot upload and download certificates or the device list, but we can manipulate them once they are on vManage. Um, under the device configs, I mentioned because we had this save running set to true, we also got the device configs. So these are the actual CLI configurations of the devices. Um, this is a very quick way to get that. Um, some people prefer to look at them in this format. Um, this also gets our V bonds. 
also gets us our vSmarts. And if we have a policy, a central policy attached to our vSmart, um, it'll also be here in the vSmart configuration, um, as well as our vManage configuration from a CLI standpoint too. Um, so very useful there. The uh, other pieces we get, so in under device templates, we have the actual templates themselves, and this is how they're construct and associated with the future templates. Under attached is just the list of device templates that were attached to a device. And so if we go to like DC edge template, we will quickly get a list of um, all of the devices that are associated with this particular template. In this case, uh, this device and host name, if we go here, we will see we get uh, this device and host name, and we have another device and host name. So this is a quick way of understanding which ones. Now, again, it's all in JSON at this moment. So this is one of the powers of the SDK is being able to take this type of information from your backups and run additional manipulation on it so that you can see this in a tabular format or um, other formats altogether. And then again, your vSmart. And again, this is not the actual templates. These are just what is attached. Okay. Um, when we get underneath, uh, let's see, policy definitions, we always get the question of uh, where are things like my app route policies, my hub and spoke. So all of the central policies and stuff are here, um, including our app route policies, security policies, any lists that are associated with policies and so on. Um, when we back something up with Sostre, um, and I think Marcelo mentioned this earlier, um, but if not, is if we back up just an individual device template, for example, using a regular expression, I only want to back up this device template. In this case here, I just backed up everything all, but I can back up any type of object. But whenever I back up an object specifically, it always backs up all of the dependency objects as well. So if I back up a device template, it will bring all the feature templates, local policy, local security policy, all the lists and everything that are required for those with that backup. So when I go to restore that later, I have all of my dependencies still uh, associated with it. Um, so I haven't played with this one here in this lab, so let's go ahead and try to do this. And it, it shouldn't do anything. Marcella, do you have any I, you know, uh, quick tips on how I can uh, maybe make some changes on our, uh, our V manage box and in order to uh, uh, do a restore? Or perhaps I should just show them a delete all from the CLI and then come back. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's okay. I mean, you can uh, just uh, run these as is, uh, and, and then you show that because, like, when you run the uh, the restore, right? Uh, the restore with the default commands, like uh, as you you have, it will basically uh, compare uh, the templates by name, and then uh, if there is all the templates, uh, the, all the name template names you have uh, in your backup matches with what all you have in the repository, then nothing will, will, will happen. Uh, there is an option for the uh, uh, update where if the, uh, it will also compare uh, the payload. I mean, if you had maybe a modification on the uh, see like a, uh, BFD or uh, feature template, uh, then you can, um, uh, the update will, will check if the contents are the same. And then uh, if they are not, then it will update. Uh, so, but I think pro probably for for this workshop, I think it would probably be better to cover actually the, I mean, you can run as is, and then we will see that, I mean, there is no uh, diff. Uh, and so it will, uh, I mean, the restore will not do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, like if we go to the next uh, item, like number four, I think, cause that is a, a question we had on Tuesday session. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be good to cover this one uh, as well. So let's, so let's let's skip the restore just for the moment. Well, let's go to here and do this one. And then um, how about, you know, one of the other questions we got, is there a way that I can use Sostry to clean up my vManage? And um, maybe we'll just mm -hmm. take a moment and show um, just manually deleting things from the CLI since I don't have it here in the, uh, and then we'll restore everything again, just to, you know, show. Sure, it. yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So, all right, so this is implementing functionality not available in Sostre. And this is really now, now that you're using it as a library and as, 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 as an SDK, you can really incorporate it into multiple things. But this is expanding on the functionality 
Um, like, hey, I, does canned soft spray do this? I'm not trying to uh, import or include any additional libraries from anything else, but I just wish it had more functionality. Um, so this particular question or, or is, is can I get, get a display of the feature templates that are associated with a particular device template? So the, the native CLI commands don't give this option, but we can do that this way, okay? Um, so um, let me just go ahead and run this. Okay, and you can see what we did is we specified a device template name. So the, we used the, the models and we used the device template index, feature template index, device template, and then the REST API exception. Um, we specified the device template name as a variable, in this case, site three, the edge template. This has to be a name of you know one of the device templates that's there, otherwise you'll get an error. Um, and then created a try accept block. Okay, and within that, again, we log in to be managed. Uh, we create an object called template device map. Um, and then uh, for each device template that's in there, uh, we're going to uh, start, or for this particular device template, we're going to look for all the feature templates that are associated with it. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah and I think that that is like a, one of the things you can do with SDK, right? So uh, instead of uh, like reinventing the wheel, trying to I mean, implement all, all these uh, like uh, stack, then uh, you can leverage what's already available in Sistry and, and build on top, right? So because I mean, from time to time we have a, a request, oh, can I see this? Uh, or can I extract this information, extract that information? Like, and we try to evaluate, like, uh, okay, how does it fit in the overall Sistry CLI, and uh, does it make sense to uh, add an extra option or, or not, and so on. And, and a lot of times we, we need to make a call to, I mean, uh, maybe we can't satisfy every single request. And then uh, we actually, like, uh, uh, a few days ago, we have had the specific request. Oh, I mean, how can I see the feature templates associated with a particular device template? And then uh, we use that as uh, like an example for the person to uh, retrieve that information. And as you can see, I mean, it's a fairly small code, uh, and it, it already includes a lot of error handling and so on. So if you skip all the error handling, I mean, the actual I mean, uh, functional code is probably like a three, four lines only, uh, and you can get that information. And uh, if you look at the API calls that are necessary in order to re uh, retrieve that because you, you basically like as you look at the device template, you get like a feature template IDs and then you need to convert to the feature template names and so on. Right. So the uh, uh, so there is a lot of uh, processing that is, is required uh, in order to get the names and not the IDs from those templates and so on. Uh, and, and the other thing is. Uh, uh, we discussed like uh, before, right? So like uh, we, here we are basically placing uh, singular uh, calls, right? We we get we call like a device template index.get, right? Uh, and we don't need to uh, be concerned about uh, is we manage sending like a rate limit signal easily manage like a busy and not able to process that request. Uh, so all these like error conditions are handled by the REST object, right? And so like, uh, for example, if uh, for some reason you're sending more requests that we manage can handle uh, and we may start sending like a 429 with limit signals, then uh, there's already a built-in algorithm that will uh, like in, in the REST object that will uh, 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 back off and retry with an exponential uh, back off, meaning like the first time it, it retries will be all, pretty much right away. Next one will be uh, like a twice the, the delay and then it keeps increasing up to a, a maximum of I believe five times. And so the all these like error handling, I mean, it, it, it you get for free by using this uh, SDK. I like that for frame. Yeah, and that and that and air handling and logging are key. Um, mm -hmm. It's a, it's it definitely is a best practice. So in here you can see they're using uh, in the case of the template that you specify it's not found. You're going to get an error. Um, that uh, uh, let's see if there's no feature templates associated with a device template, you'll get an indication of that. Um, and within in this case, and then it's mapping to it, creating a list of that and then uh, providing that list of all those templates. So 
there, there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, I'm currently, like I said, I'm currently working on, on a couple pieces. Uh, one is to, um, we always, we, we get the, the request a lot is to, um, how do I know which, like, how do I know which device templates and feature templates are not being used? What's an easy way to do that? Um, so this is another way I would follow this similar approach, but in that case, looking for a particular value um, in the object that it's an attachment value. And um, I can either see if it's attached, true or false, or I can look at number of devices that are attached to it. If it's, uh, you know, greater than uh, zero, then I'm not interested and provide a list of all the unused objects in there. That's important for keeping your vManage performance up is, is clearing out unused objects and keeping the, the number of objects to a minimum. Um, and that'll give you much better UI performance on that. Um, all right, we have a couple minutes left here. And so let's let's play with this restore all. I'm going to go over to our vManage here uh, for a sec. And well, I'm actually going to go to my uh, VS Code here. And I'm going to do a, uh, I like doing verbose. Um, I'm going to do a delete all. And I was like, oh, gosh. What are, and now this will delete everything that's not a factory default template. And because I didn't specify, it's going to ask me for some uh, information. Um, if it's a CX project ID, if you're Cisco um, or working on a Cisco project, you can put that in. If you're a partner, um, you can put that in. Um, you just have to put something in. You can also, I, I often do this, just put my username in there. Um, my vManage address, uh, which now i got to remember what my vManage address is. Um, here. <laughs> So I'm going to grab my vManage address from here, paste it here, my username, admin, C1, S1, one, two, three, four, five. Please don't fat finger that. Okay. And so now it's going there and, uh, and notice this failed right off. Okay. Now, the reason it can't fail is because it's attached. Um, so this is a great way. If I do this delete all and I don't, there is an option for me to do delete all with the detach. But what this is going to do is it's going to go through anything that's attached. I'm going to get an error on, which is fine because I don't want to delete anything that's attached. What it's doing is it's finding everything that's not attached and deleting it. So if you get to a point with your vManage and you're looking at it and you decide, okay, everything that I'm using, everything that I absolutely need, anything that's not in use, I don't plan to use and I need to clean it up. I just cleaned it up. Okay. And so now my vManage has, we've deleted several items on there. They were not in use, um, and then anything that was attached um, is did not get detached. If I do this, oh. and that, and I'm giving a good example of the importance of using an SH file in your environment. <laughs> if you don't want to have to type that in every time. You can also do it on the command line too, but we're just showing you lots of different options. So now what it's doing with the detach is it's detaching anything that was, uh, any device template that was attached to a device, but it's also deactivating any central policy that was activated on the vman or on the vSmart controller. So detach means remove attachments of device templates and deactivate central policies. And you can use this with regular expressions. I used all, um, and you can also use this with specific types of objects and keywords. So you can specifically say like delete just this and detach it. Um, but for the sake of uh, this demonstration, I'm going to delete everything. It'll be completely gone. And as soon as it's done, uh, I'm going to go ahead and restore it again. And um, through our playbook, or, I'm sorry, our notebook here, and then that we should be able to wrap up with any other questions. Do we have any questions at the moment? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, so I guess well, while we wait, I just wanted, I guess, a review, right? So uh, we, we basically on Tuesday, we provided like an overview of the of the tool, uh, was more like a slide explaining like the history, uh, how you can use the tool, the different options to consume. Today, we focused on, on uh, demoing uh, how you go about those different consumption models, right? We saw the, the, uh, some examples of the uh, CLI, uh, some examples of the uh, Ansible collection, and some examples of the uh, SDK. And uh, 
you know, also we we showed like uh, what you get uh, uh, added at each time uh, at each of those uh, options, right? So we saw that in Ansible collections, you're now able to uh, combine multiple tasks in one uh, workflow. You are able to uh, more easily parse the output of uh, of the tasks and so on, right? And also combine with the other Ansible modules, of course. Uh, with the SDK, now you have a, 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 a more uh, options. So not only what you get from uh, the Ansible collection, you can also uh, like uh, create new tasks, right? You can uh, uh, add or modify like uh, the output from uh, uh, what you normally get, let's say from the show control connections, you saw that we can now add an extra field uh, of the uptime scenes, you can, we can convert that field and so on. Uh, we can implement functionality that was not available incisely, like uh, in this case, we retrieve that information to display the uh, uh, list of the feature templates associated with the device template and so on. So uh, that's basically, I guess, just a summary of what we, we cover in those uh, uh, two days. Uh, yep. that's, a lot, that's a lot, definitely. Well, so we know it's a lot of information. So all of this is available for you to come back and look in the recording. Uh, you should be able to follow the, uh, reserve your own sandbox, uh, follow the documentation, uh, play with any of the notebooks that we're providing here. And uh, as you can see here, we're just finishing up. We're doing a restore all. Um, we're going back from that backup test working directory that we did our backup to in the first place. So we're just restoring everything we backed up in the first place, except for factory templates. You can see the first step is, is it's going to log in. And then, as Marcelo said, it does a, an existing inventory. So it starts looking at what's already on the vManage. Um, we didn't use the force. Um, and in that case, if, uh, if there's anything with the same name still on there, it's going to ignore it. Um, we deleted everything, so there shouldn't be anything there at all with the same name. So, But it's still going to go through this inspection and start pushing items uh, that it needs to restore from that backup list. And you can see it restoring everything, your lists, your policies, and it does it in reverse order. So it builds upon the dependencies. You know, lists need to be created before you can create a policy that refers to it. Um, a, anything that the feature template refers to needs to be there first before the feature template can be created. All the feature templates and local policies need to be completely created before we can create device templates. And then finally, we create the device templates. Now, I didn't use the attach option, I'm going to do that one more time from the CLI um, here. And uh, since everything has already been restored, I'm just going to do this restore all again. It won't have anything new to restore, but I'm going to reattach everything that it last. You need, oh, you need to provide the uh, work to you. Yeah. Can't type. What, what was our working directory? <laughs> Did I get that Back, wrong? In the backup. Uh... Backup tests. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, no, you're, you're probably, we direct, you need to see the, yeah. Okay, uh, so yeah, we are almost uh, uh, at the time, uh, I mean, top of the hour. And so the, uh, uh, just one thing that I would like to share that is not on the, uh... yeah, so now it's running there, yeah. Uh, so now it's reattaching, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just before we go, can I just quickly share uh, a slide? Yeah, with, uh, with go some ahead, references go ahead Marcel, I'm gonna stop sharing. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, just as a re refresh, I mean, the uh, we, uh, so those, all those links are in the uh, attachment uh, from this workshop. Uh, and you'll be able to see the record. So the, uh, the uh, main like repository that we were referring to is up here. 
uh, one thing that we didn't include, and it, it, I'm showing here now, is the, uh, how you can ask for support. Right? So we have this mailer, Cypher support, uh, Cisco.com, that you can use to ask questions about Cypher, Cypher Pro, Cypher Ansible, and the and the SDK. All right. So uh, yeah, thank you everybody, uh, and thank you Eric and, uh, for for helping out with the. Oh well, thank you Marcelo for all your tutelage and mentoring. And, um, you know, feel free like me, I'm a student, so jump in, have fun with this, people. <laughs>